Is it true that a decision is already made even before you attend the interview? The answer to that is a definite no. We get this question all the time. I know the rumors are, the rumors are out there. I know that sometimes, you know, a lot of our, our readers and, and, uh, and viewers, they, they, they contradict what we say and say, that's not true. That's not what everybody says on the internet. Well, those people on the internet are just random people on the internet. We are former visa officers. You can look at our credentials. We have them on our website, our diplomas, our, our consular commissions, our diplomatic commissions. You can look in the senatorial record where we were confirmed as foreign service officers, diplomats of the United States of America, and also as consular officers. You can look up our credentials and you can trust what we tell you because we've actually been on the inside. And when I tell you that the decision is not made before your interview, you can trust this. In fact, in 99.9% .9 of cases, the visa officer has never looked at your case before you arrive at the interview. They take your passport and they scan that barcode and they start looking at your application. No one has looked at the case before that in 99.9% .9 of cases. And so, yes, you are the 99.9%. .9%. Don't give me the question, well, what's the 0.01%? That doesn't apply to you. Trust me. That's, that's, that's some, that these are random, random cases. That's basically just saying anything can happen. However, the standard way that is going to apply to every single one of you is that you're going to submit your application. You're going to get a, an interview date. You're going to show up at that window. And that is the first moment that you have ever entered that visa officer's mind. When they see you standing behind the applicant that they're already interviewing, they see you standing behind that applicant. They're, they're already starting to subconsciously form an opinion about you. Everything goes into, into play there. Your demeanor, your dress, the way you speak, your confidence, your posture, um, the, way, you know, the, the way that you filled out your DS-160, the way that you're responding to the consular officer's questions, everything is going into affecting whether or not they feel that they want to give 214B or issue your visa, right? And they're trying to get there as fast as they possibly can. Sometimes people think that a decision has already been made and it's because the visa officers make a decision so rapidly, right? Now, having done tens of thousands of these visa in interviews, you get very good at what you're doing. If you've done anything 10,000 times, you get very good at it, let alone 60,000 or 100,000 times. So you get very good at scanning that DS-160 extremely quickly for important pieces of information that you know you're going to be considering for asking pointed questions that you know from what you've already gleaned from the DS-160, what else do you want to, to know to build a, a better mental model of this applicant, right? You're trying to get maybe two, three data points that are going to support your decision to issue or refuse the visa, and then you make that decision and move on. That's, that's the way that the managers force the visa officers to work. There's time constraints. It's not just the managers. It's because there are so many applicants and so few resources. They have to go quickly like that. And so, yes, they're moving quickly, but they are reading your information in real time, asking you questions, interpreting it, and then making a decision. There's no, you know, they don't get a note saying, hey, refuse this person. That's not how it works.